Baseball is the sports fabric and the soul of my family. And what tops objects as baseball cards meant to me as an artist. I was drawing like a maniac when I was five to 10. I never stopped. My friends and I would just bust out our tops cards and render those players. I have such vivid memories of sitting on the floor drawing baseball cards. What's up everybody, this is JK5, AKA Joseph Ari Aloy, and this is Project 70, Meet the Artist, as opposed to Meet the Falkers or Meet the Parents with Robert De Niro. I would say I've known I've wanted to be an artist from kindergarten. Like, as soon as I could hold an implement, you know, I started drawing Batman and Star Wars with crayons when I was six, seven years old. Batman, five and six, Star Wars, of course, in 77 when I was seven. And I've never really stopped, you know? I never really questioned what I was gonna do with my life, and I'm so grateful for that. I've just been drawing my whole life and always knew that art was the way. You're kind of always struggling and you're always striving and you're always working towards that next level and then as soon as you reach it, you're back to scratch, you're back to nothing. You're always climbing up a new rung of the ladder, metaphorically, right? And I've had some amazing crescendo, high point, really exciting moments in my career and I've had consistently crushing, disappointing moments. It ebbs and flows, it's up and down. You have to just keep your head down and make work because it's in your blood and you have to do it to survive. And it's all kind of organic and cumulative and gradual. And you know, there were things that happened that I thought would just take it to that crazy next level. And I'd be able to stop tattooing or I'd be able to completely support my family and my kids. And then things don't pan out, you know? It's, uh, it's just about the long haul, man. Like the process is the life and the journey. So yeah, lots of ups and downs. I think a real turning point that crystallized everything was I started tattooing in 1994. And I got into it because a good friend of mine was an amazing printmaker and he was tattooing. He had the equipment. It was all punk rock style out of his kitchen in Providence, Rhode Island. His name was Forrest Curl, big shout out. And I got really seduced and immersed and blown away by the history and the culture of tattooing. I immediately saw its potential. And at the time, I didn't want to do anything corporate. It was just about my own personal work and what I really wanted to get out in the world at the time, you know? And personally, there was a real convergence of factors where I got a letter from my birth mother, 23 years, five months, and 19 days after I was born. And I started getting tattooed a little bit before that. And it was like this storm of communication from the Senorita Universalis, basically saying, this is it, you have to do this. This is your path. I had certain styles and sensibilities that were inspiring to Forrest. And he's like, look, man, if you ever learn how to tattoo, I think you'd be a hell of a tattoo artist. And I just, I trusted that. And I got into it, man, and I served an apprenticeship. All I did was fill sketchbooks with original content and tattoo five, six days a week. Within four or five years of tattooing, I was booked for almost a year and a half in advance at all times. And then I filled so many sketchbooks. In 99, my best friend opened a gallery in Seattle and we planned on publishing a book of my work and we embarked on this journey and then published a 432 page hardbound volume of my work from my kids' drawings, then the letter from my birth mother, then the best of about 40, 50 sketchbooks from 94 to 99, just generating original content as a tattoo artist. A year before the Tops Project came my way, I was like, I really want to get back into realism and figurative drawing and portraiture. Tops came along and it got me to really shift and focus on developing the last 30 years of kind of sensibility nurturing on one plane, one piece at a time. It's just been this amazing gift and exercise. And to be able to have it be successful and enable me to shift away from tattooing, but 
I'm just still tattooing, man. It's just on paper. What's the first step of conceptualizing and research look like for you? The first step is figuring out what jumps out, what could be a catalyst, what could give me something special to really start with that's distinct about that player, about that individual. It could be a nickname, it could be a specific stat, it could be a physical feature, it could be some aesthetic element. If I remember the player, the catalyst can be something distinct and memorable that really stood out to me about the individual. I'm working on Goose Gossage right now and how do you not play with the fact that his name was Goose? They are as direct and physically produced and created and analog as it gets. I start with notes and then I have the pieces of paper already measured, ready to go, so they're really cohesive. I may or may not use a light box to start and I'll use that just for the lightest, most delicate initial pencil sketch just to get my proportions dialed. And then from there, it's all by eye, pencil more and more and more and more and more articulate, more and more detailed, more and more defined, more and more kind of conceptually realized until that pencil layer is really done. And then I ink it all and then I just color. Sometimes I use graphite and colored pencils. I use Prismacolor markers. I've used watercolor, I've used acrylic, and that's it, man. I was able to fly low enough beneath the radar in Project 2020 to really sneak in some good encrypted pop cultural specific information. But I'm really trying to loosen up and have fun by making them even tighter and richer and deeper this time around. I learned so much from Project 2020, so much about process, formula, systems. What's evolved from Project 2020 to Project 70 is I've come up with a really focused list of elements that I'm encrypting and including in each one. So there's that degree of cohesion. It's my nature to quote unquote, fill all spaces and build all spaceships, if you will. It's something called horror vacui. It's a Latin term for someone that has a compulsion to fill any surface with a surfeit of ornate detail. And I definitely suffer from that. It's kind of a disease. But then I'm really considerate. I feel really responsible for every iota, right? Like every square inch, someone's gonna bust their ass, earn some money, pay for this card, enjoy it with their kids. And the term Easter egg is something that I've always included in the work. I like that there's a maze or a puzzle or a discovery. Each one is its own story. And then there's certainly the arc if you experience them all together. Pops wasn't just a household name, it was like, part of the fabric of our childhood in a way that was so physical and tangible. Like everyone carried around these big photo albums and you just plop them down on the desk and trade and the gum would be brittle and not even that good. And there was a language around it. It was a ritual. It was a real religious experience. There's a lot to say about what Topps cards as objects did for my love of print. I'm a huge fan. And it's in my blood, it's in the fabric of, of my being from my earliest memories. It always begins and ends with something from nothing, right? Build and, and extrapolate and, and come up with all my own lexicons of I know I'm kind of going off on the tangents, that's what editing's for. You can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Like Frank Sinatra said, it's very real, it's a great quote. Yo, what's up? This is F Dot. This is JK5. My name is New York Nico. And I'm here with my homies from Tops. And this is Project 70. Meet the artists. Boom. That was fire. Break yourself. Break yourself. <laughs> <laughs>